And so the photo safari is part of the thing we do where they start noticing things around them that they haven't noticed before. So they're given 20 minutes and uh, what they have to do is they have to like take a picture of their watch as their first picture. And they, it's, like a, it's like a scavenger hunt. So it's to find, find something that's an interesting shadow. Find something that makes use of converging lines. And they don't really know what those things are, but all of a sudden they're talking about, I never looked at the leaves on the sidewalk before, or I never looked at the, the ceiling of my building. And that's a real subtle thing that goes on in this class is that people look at the world differently. Uh, Brittany did another visual assignment that's called design um, a postcard for a place that you've always wanted to go and never been. So she found a picture of uh, the London Bridge, but she used her, she's learned how to do graphic skills and did this beautiful collage of she figured out how to separate the London Bridge, superimposed it on the flag, and she went to a lot of trouble to find a font that sort of to her suggested what the city of London represented. Um, Nancy's an amazing student. She came in and she says, I've been on the internet for 10 years and I'm known everywhere by Bell Kid. That's my handle. Well, the domain was available. So that she's kind of already has an established residency. The first Google Hangout, she says, why doesn't this class have a subreddit? Now, I don't know if you know what Reddit is, but it's, it's an online community that's called like the bulletin board of the internet. And it's where a lot of the things that become popular on the internet happen. And she says, why don't we have a subreddit? I said, tell me what it is, let's make one. Yeah. I sort of knew what it was, but we make these things up as we go. She did this really interesting assignment. It's called the, uh, the newspaper Blackout Poetry. And it's basically a creation by deletion. So you take an article and you black out words to change the meaning. So she took um, Barack Obama's inaugural speech and turned it into um, a speech. She's a gender study student. So she turned it into um, a poem about the history of the gay rights movement. And she went to incredible lengths. This is actually this image. That's about one-fifth of it. It goes on and on and on. And she didn't do this in Photoshop. She took the article and actually did it with her hands. So it's pretty amazing. Uh, another assignment, Caitlin's, uh, we have a similar to the photo safari, we start talking about design. Um, I introduce them to the design assignments. I don't really explain a lot about what they are, but they have to go out and find examples of the use of color, things like minimalism and fonts, etc. So again, they're looking at the world around them in a different way. Another design assignment is this one called um, the Six Word Memoir. Uh, I found it on the site called uh, Brain Pickings, which is an amazing site for inspirational ideas. And the idea is the play on Hemingway's a six word story, but you design it with a, an image to sort of be a story of your life. So Casey's really into books. I think she's a library science student. I'll be reading, you know, owls with books, but like I'll be reading is her website. Um, out of my world into yours. Beautiful, simple, but it says a lot about her. Uh, Tim E is his name, so his domain is Slowly killing Tim E. I don't know if that's how he feels about the course. Um, yeah, but he's really playing with, with, with uh, and to me, I just love that part of the course. This assignment is kind of, uh, we do it around Valentine's Day when we're doing design. So there's a, uh, one of Jim's first students is a girl named Sarah, and this is what happens in DS106. She's following the class still three years later. And in 2000, uh, last year, she sent Jim an email and says, I want to create a challenge assignment for your students. And she had um, found this pack of really tacky Valentine's Day cards with like these sappy images. And her challenge was she put them on her Flickr site. She says, have them uh, recaption it to change the meaning of the cards. So you can't see this one, but there's a picture like in this loving embrace in a waterfall. And on the ridge are like these cowboys and horses. I'm sure someone is not going to see us here. So students kind of play with the kind of the connotation of Valentine's Day. Um, Tiffany is amazing. She's fandom princess. I don't know what's up with princesses. I've got two princesses in my class. Um, she's really interested in becoming a screenwriter. Writing is the thing that she loves, and but she's taking on <coughs> all this media creation. What she did from the beginning of class, from her first blog post, blew me away. She invented a character called the fandom princess. And every one of her blog posts starts with about five to ten paragraphs of this narrative that she creates. And she's talking about her dog named Ghost and this other prince who's off in a faraway land and getting like a satchel from the uh, king and queen. And I think she's sort of um, embodying what's going on in her life in a way, but she's building her own narrative around it. It's not even part of the class, but I enjoy reading it. So she did this assignment that's called the uh, Venn Diagram. And 
graphically, this is simple to do. This is actually just putting text on an image. But you're supposed to take three pop culture, sometimes it's aspects or person, and find out what the overlap are as to what uh, defines it. And this was hard. The first time I did this, it took me like two hours to figure out the right relationships for different characters that I could represent. So it's not about creating the media, it's about the thinking that goes on uh, behind it in this case. Here's my other princess. Confessions of a future Disney princess. That's a long one. <laughs> Carissa is a math major. So she's kind of playing with what you think of math majors with her interest in Disney. And she did this assignment for audio um, where it's called the, the contest that nobody could win. So the idea is you have to take um, songs and only uh, edit together two seconds of them and try to make it hard to guess it what, what it is. She didn't do pop songs. She found these songs about calculus that people had done. And she says it's even harder because you probably don't even know these songs. <laughs> but I asked my students to show me how they create their stuff. So when they do audio or video, I want to see a screenshot of their editing environment. So I, I sort of have a sense about how much complexity went into their work. Uh, the other thing I should mention is that I do not tell my students what software to use. And in fact, I don't even have to teach them software. So if they have, um, some of them use GarageBand, if they have um, iMovie or whatever, they can use whatever they have. Not all of them have Photoshop, so we introduced them to GIMP, which is an open source free graphic editing tool. Um, but they have to learn how to use these things, and they, they, they do it on their own. They find the YouTube tutorials. We have a couple resources we give them, and they otherwise they have to ask. I love Jasmine's blog. Her, her blog, she was scared of the technology, so she, her username and her blog is confused easily. <laughs> Halfway through the course, I, didn't even, I barely noticed it. That was the title of her blog when she started, and she changed it to Simplicity is the Best Policy. I think that's just amazing. She just totally ratifies her, her perspective about technology. Most of the students, when, I, when they start writing about when I introduce audio, they start to say, oh, I hate audio. I'm gonna, I can't, audio is going to be hard. I only had one student who likes audio because um, she actually does it professionally. But most people don't like to do audio, but they say that before they've ever done it. And then afterwards, they'll say things like, um, I never knew it could be so easy. It's like cutting and pasting words. And they actually are able to use their, their familiarity with doing basic audio editing and a lot of their other work as they go ahead. Uh, Sarah Park, she makes fun of waiting for the spark, so she's kind of playing off of the name of what she does. Uh, we have a week's worth of assignments. Am I running over? Tell me when to stop. Okay, like one more minute. Okay. Yeah. So um, we, we kind of play with this idea about how stories can be told within the web, and it's based upon this thing called the, there's this really tacky t-shirt on Amazon called the Three Wolf Moon t-shirt, and it's got these three wolves howling at the moon. And for some reason, someone wrote like a fake comment in there, and it was like, this shirt did the most amazing thing. I put it on and girls were climbing all over me. <laughs> and so what happened is like 200 people have joined in and sort of created this narrative based upon this t-shirt. So we started saying, are there ways to tell stories not just on the web, but within existing web constructs? So we use this tool from Mozilla called Hackasaurus. And it's amazing because you can go to any website and you can change everything on the web page. So their assignment is to do this. So she took this um, device that she had a lot of trouble with and said it's the crappy thing with jig that works about five minutes before picking up a ton of random static. <laughs> and she's changed like all the features and the prices, etc. So it's not a complete story in a way, but it's like using the web as, as a narrative. And um, the last thing I'll tell you about is part of this, um, getting students to comment on each other's work. I've tried everything in the book, giving them points, making the requirements. Um, making them, uh, doing, having them not comment on everybody's blog, comment on just four people's blog within a group. Um, this, this one I did, their assignment was, during the week we did the web stories, they had to create a character and comment on other people's blogs in their class. So um, Chelsea, her character was Chelsea K, and all her comments were in Pig Latin. <laughs> okay, so it's, it's not really meant to be anything, but to, to them to sort of play with the idea of character. That's about half my students, but what you'll get in my workshop is um, we're actually going to get you set up with a WordPress blog here on um, Wagner's site. Um, we're going to do a little bit of, of play with uh, online identity, and then we're going to go in and do uh, a couple of these DS106 assignments so you'll get an experience of, of what it's like. And sorry, I, wish, I really want to show all of these. Yeah. Thanks, Al.
me that the buzzer is going to go in about 30 <laughs> seconds. So that's perfect timing. Um, does anyone have any questions for the three speakers before we break for lunch? I say break for lunch, there's no one wants to stay. Um, and just a couple of quick housekeeping things. So thank, first of all, thank you very much to, the, to our three speakers. Uh, and so really for arranging all of this. Um, so the way this is going to work is we're now going to walk over to the faculty dining room where we're going to be um, go to a table that there'll be tent signs on the tables for the Wagner faculty who are going to be leading a discussion. So pick the table. And, uh, and then we'll have lunch right there after uh, the faculty discussions. And lunch tickets, are in, lunch tickets are in the folder, right? So make sure you take that with you. Um, at that lunch in the faculty dining room, there will be three clipboards on the table as you walk into the room. Neil is going to be sort of manning that table. Those are the three clipboards on which you will sign up for which of the three workshops Probably this afternoon you want after to you first got into your groups and worked a while, at some point go off get to and I'll be at the table too. So that, that would be a good point to swing by and just sign up on the clipboard for your afternoon. Yes. Oh yes, and there are some name tags here if you, if you haven't gotten your name tag. And for those of you who are tweeting or blogging about today, there is a hashtag for the day. It's uh, Wagner Emlet. Yes. So Wagner Emlet. Mm -hmm. 